Welcome back. In this video, we are going to multiply and divide radical expressions. So let's review our product rule for radicals. The product rule says that if we have the same index, we can multiply our radicals. So radical A times radical B equals the nth root of radical A times B. As long as the index is the same, we can go ahead and do that. So for square roots, this is pretty simple. Any square root squared is a perfect square. So radical A times radical A equals A, or radical A squared equals A. So a lot of guys, when we say, you know, radical 6 times radical 6, First, they multiply those two together. They put together the, the product rule for radicals, and they call that radical 36, which is true. That's what it is. But they go through this process, make that radical 36, and call it 6. But what I'd really like you to be able to do is to go right from radical 6 times radical 6 and to call that 6. You know, what's radical 7 times radical 7? Seven? 7, you know. What's radical Tom times radical Tom? Well, that's simply Tom. So what's radical 6 times radical 6? It's 6. And the quotient rule for radicals, moving on, that it's okay to simplify or reduce the radicand and then apply the root. So here we have a sample or the, the mathematical formula the nth root of a over b just equals the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b. But we will be able to combine this with the product rule and simplify. Let's say we had the square root of 48 over 6. Well, that would be okay to reduce this, you know, 48 over 6 is 8. Um, so we could look at this as the square root of 8 times the square root of 6 all over the square root of 6 as well. Most of you would just re reduce that as 48 over 6 and call that the square root of 8. Which that also then simplifies. There's still a perfect square factor in there of 4 and that's 2 radical 2. When we're multiplying radicals, we need to watch out for a couple things, um, but we will distribute just like we have in the past. With square roots and cube roots and radicals, you can go ahead and distribute into a radical. Or you can FOIL with radicals, okay, which is this, the distributive property, but with a pair of binomial factors. So a, a plus b times x plus y, or a plus b times x minus y, is going to be a times x, b times y, b times x, and a times y. So we're going to see that that smile method again, aren't we? Okay, so that's fine. You can just do that. Watch out for your patterns when you're multiplying radicals. We're going to see the difference of two squares patterns quite a bit. a plus b times the quantity a minus b is a squared minus b squared. Uh, we're going to see that this pattern, we're going to end up calling that conjugates. Okay, Anything that follows this particular pattern with square roots or later on with imaginary numbers, these are conjugates. Okay, Conjugates are follow the multiplication, follow the difference of two squares patterns. And then you'll also have your perfect square trinomials. Both versions, a plus b quantity squared multiplies out to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and a minus b squared multiplies out to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, so remember that we cannot do that. That is an absolute no-no. And if you're really on top of your game, you will also recognize the sum of two cubes. That the, a binomial a plus b times the trinomial a squared minus ab plus b squared 
almost a perfect square trinomial here, but not quite, multiplies out to a cubed plus b cubed. And same thing for the difference of two cubes. So just to review those patterns, the quantity a minus b times the trinomial a squared plus ab plus b squared multiplies all out to a cubed minus b cubed. Now we memorize these in the opposite direction with factoring, but as we know, multiplication is just factoring in reverse, or factoring is multiplication in reverse, and those patterns still hold. So let's do some sample problems. Let's multiply the following. This first one, this is 7 times radical 3 squared. So we're squaring the 7 and we're squaring the radical 3. So we have 7 squared and radical 3 squared. So that is 49 times 3 or 147. The cube root of 6 times the cube root of 18 using our product rule. 6 times 18 equals the cube root of 108. Well, factors of 108, now I'm looking for perfect cube factors. I'm going to go and do my product rule in reverse so that we get the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 4. 27 is a perfect cube, so our final answer is 3 times the cube root of 4. Sample problem 3, we're going to distribute radical 7. And we know radical 7 times radical 7 is 7 minus, and using our quotient rule, this is really radical 7 times 3. So we have 7 minus radical 21. Sample problem number 4. Again, we're going to distribute something a little bit more complicated, though. We have radical 11y times radical y. So if you will, that's a radical 11 times radical y squared. So that's y radical 11. And then in our second multiplication, radical 11y minus 2 radical 11. So we have negative 2 times radical 11 times radical 11 times the square root of y. So we have y square root of 11 minus radical 11 or square root of 11 squared. So that's 2 times 11, so we get 22 square root of y. Sample number 5, a little bit more complicated because of our foiling process here. We have a binomial times a binomial. So the square root of x times the square root of x is x. And the square root of 5 times negative square root of 3 is negative radical square root of 15. And we'll do the inner ones. Radical 5, square root of 5 times the square root of x is plus square root of 5x. And then finally, square root of x times the square root of 3 is negative square root of 3x. We don't have any like radicals to combine, so that is our final answer. Might as well show where the purple came from. Sample number 6, 4 plus radical 5 times 4 minus radical 5. This is our difference of two squares pattern, and we will also call this conjugates. So get used to me referring to these as conjugates in class. So we have the same sign on one of the terms but opposite on the other. a plus b, a minus b. So this follows the pattern 4 squared minus radical 5. 
squared, which is just 16 minus 5, which is 11. Sample problem number 7. I'm going to have you do this one in class, and I'm just going to say, Psst, it's a secret. Don't tell anybody. Let's see if you can multiply that one out and do that correctly. So bring that one to class. And let's go on to some division. Um, you know what? I'm going to save number 8 for you. Bring that one to class. But I'll do 9 and 10. Those are nice sample problems. So number 9, we're going to divide. And we can divide like square roots here. If we can just simplify that, that would be really nice. Now with radical 75, immediately I want to split that into radical 25 times radical 3 because I know 25 is a perfect square. But in this case, because of the radical 5x in the denominator, I'm going to make radical 75 radical 15 times radical 5. And then x cubed, I'll make that radical x times radical x squared. And my denominator is radical 5 and radical x. As we are fortunate, these simplify and become 1. So our numerator stays radical 15, and the square root of x squared is x. So our answer here is x square root of 15. Number 10 is a little different because we've got perfect cubes. So I'm looking for perfect cube factors of 250, or I'm looking for a cube root of 2. And I think I can take a cube root of 2 out of the numerator. So I'm left with cube root of 125 times the cube root of 2 all over the cube root of 2. My cube root of 2 simplify, and then the cube root of 125 is 5. So there's my final answer there. Hopefully you can use the skills that we saw in 9 and 10 and apply that to number 8, and you can bring that one to class. And I will see you in class 